In this Ethereum session, I want to talk about immutability on the Ethereum blockchain and why it's so important. And for that, I have a little smart contract prepared here. I'm going to show you what it does, uh, what I'm going to do with it, and why immutability or why you cannot delete smart contracts really, uh, why this is. So this is the content of this Ethereum session. So I'm going to deploy this smart contract here. And you see, when I hit deploy, then a transaction is sent off to an internal blockchain here. And then I can click on my hello world. And this will output this string here from this variable, which is public. So this will automatically create, create a getter function. So I can output hello world. And every time I click, it will create a new transaction, a call a reading operation against the internal blockchain node here. Now, the thing is, I copy this address here. So it's deployed on the, it's a separate address is a smart contract. And then I remove this smart contract here, I can also click delete. So I have no contracts here to interact with. But I can, I, the data is still there. So it's stored in this internal blockchain. So if I tell my remix here that this smart contract is running under that address, you see no transaction here. It's really just trying to interact with this address, uh, seeing the interface from this smart contract, one public uh, variable gives us um, a, a reading function, get a function and one writing function kill me, which I'm going to talk in a second about. So again, uh, no transaction happened and I click my hello world and it gives me hello world there again. So as if this was never deleted, so I can remove this again, delete this completely, but it's not really deleted. If I say it's at this address, uh, click hello world, it's still there. So instead, uh, I have to use this self destruct function from if uh, from solidity, which really deletes a smart contract. And when I hit kill me, then a transaction is sent off. And then when I hit my hello world, then it's really deleted. But it's not deleted completely. Because uh, the smart contract from this block on uh, is not there anymore. But before uh, where we deployed the smart contract at a specific block uh, over here, uh, a couple of blocks before it is uh, deployed and the blocks are not deleted. So the information is still there. But how does this work in a little bit more detail? If we look at it from a theory perspective, why can't we delete data on the blockchain? Why is this not possible, even though we call this self destruct function, which apparently removes code? Uh, why is it still there? And this is what we're going to talk about now. Let's have a closer look why we can't delete smart contracts, only deactivate them. It's hidden in one of the properties the blockchain offers us. It's an append only trustable database, or what we call it immutability. When a blockchain is first formed, it starts with a block zero, the so called Genesis block. This block has specific properties that are known beforehand. After that, a new block needs to be mined by minor nodes. When that happens, a new block is linked to the old block by taking the hash of the content of the old block and adding it into the new block, let's say block one. Then mining starts all over again, block two is found and block one's content is linked to the new block and so on and so forth. Block two isn't working much differently as well as block three, four, five until let's say we hit a block number N. Here we try to deploy our smart contract. We call it Hello World. When we write a smart contract, then the source code needs to be compiled and the binary needs to be converted into a hex format. That hex string is then sent off as a transaction where the smart contract is essentially sitting in the data field of that transaction. Now the transaction sits in the transaction pool until a minor node picks it up and bakes it into a block by mining the block. The block is then added to the blockchain. In block n, we know the previous block's hash, so we can always link back to the previous block, which is maybe block n minus one. After our block n, the miner doesn't stop really. There is another block n plus one, n plus two, n plus three, and so on. It just keeps going. On Ethereum, that's every 10 to 20 seconds where a new block is generated, no matter if there are transactions or not. But why can't we just remove a block in the middle? Well, Let's play this through. Let's say we have a simple blockchain consisting of just four blocks and we want to remove block number two. Block zero doesn't point to any previous block. So this is why it's called the parent hash where it's empty and it's called the Genesis block. Block one does link to block zero's contents hash. 
and block two links to block number one and block three links to block number two. Let's say our transaction just happened in block two. That's the block that we try to remove here. And this is where we deployed our smart contract. When someone would download the blockchain and process it block by block, he would see nothing much happening anywhere except in block two, where we deployed our smart contract with a transaction. So the state of that particular blockchain node would be updated containing now a smart contract on a specific address. There's nothing, nothing. And here's one transaction where we deploy our smart contract. And in block three, there is nothing again. If we can take out that particular block, our transaction would have never happened and our smart contract would have never been deployed. Essentially, we would have to relink block three to block two, meaning we would have to change the field parent hash of block three from the hash of the content of block number two, which we try to take out, to the hash of the content from block one. Unfortunately, we can't do it because we are not alone with this database, which is essentially a database, so we're not alone with its blockchain. And here is where the decentralization of data kicks in. If we take our blockchain with four blocks and look at it from the perspective of a real network, then we are totally not alone out there. There are normally dozens, if not hundreds or thousands of blockchain nodes out there. Each and every blockchain node holds a copy of the exact same data. The blockchain nodes are communicating with each other across the network on Ethereum that's happening via a dev B2B protocol. And there is no central authority or server or something where they are connected to. They're talking to each other. When a new block is mined or generated in any way, then the block's data, including the parent hash connecting it to the previous block is propagated across the network. First from the minor node to all peers connected to the minor node. And then from there, from these peers to the other peers and so on and so forth until the block is completely distributed across the network. Until the block is validated, meaning each and every node is opening the block, reading the content, checking if everything is valid, signatures, hashes, ledgers, and so on. Then if everything adds up and the block is valid, then the block is added to the own stack of already downloaded blocks. And then the next one, and after that, the next one, and the next one, and the next block, the machine never stops. If we would want to take out a block or want to change any information, you would have to have access to each and every blockchain node holding a copy of the data. There is no delete command over here, except everybody agrees that they're gonna remove one block of their own database. But that rarely happens. Did you like this video and wanna learn some Solidity coding? Then check out the full course in the description below. There is a full course which covers everything from very beginning on how blockchain works and so on until the very uh, advanced topics, how Solidity works with large projects, how library works, how you deploy the code and so on. Engage with this video, like, subscribe or comment to receive more of this. I'm going to publish more of those videos over time. And lastly, thanks for watching, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next one.